Hello everyone, welcome back to Signing Spiritually. I'm super excited to have you here today. Today, we are going to start learning about a new video series that I'm going to be doing. We are going to start learning about the different days of creation. So for today, we are going to be learning about the first day of creation. Next week, we are going to learn about the second day of creation, and then so on and so forth. So we will learn about all seven days. I will teach it and you will learn about it. So we're going to start by watching the video from the Deaf Bible app. So I'm gonna put up a short clip about the first day of creation. And once again, I do not own the rights for this video, but I am using it for educational and informational purposes. So I'm gonna put up the video and go ahead and watch, and then I will be right back to discuss about that. Here's that disclaimer. For my hearing audience, I will read directly from the Bible while he translates for our deaf audience. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and morning, the first day. So in the beginning, there was nothing. There was no light, no sound, no people, just nothing. And that is actually very interesting because it actually matches with scientists. And I really enjoy learning about science. And I actually think that it matches and it goes in line a lot. Some of it, not all of it is in agreement, but some of it matches. For example, in the beginning, scientists, they believe that in the beginning there was nothing. Nothing was happening, there was no movement, no light, no life, nothing. And it's the same in the Bible, it matches it. There is nothing happening, no animals, no plants, no humans, nothing, no worlds, nothing at all. So the problem with the scientists' belief is that they believe that first there was nothing and then all of a sudden something happened well there's a problem with that we have two rules in science that say that's impossible and that it can't happen the first one that we have is the law of conservation of mass so that's just fancy wording for nothing can be created or destroyed so everything right now that we have in the universe, we had, we'll have it forever, and we had it always in the past. But the problem with that is they believe that in the beginning there was nothing there, right? But now we have all of these things. We have people, plants, animals, we have all these different things. Well, how can that happen if there's no atom? and none can be created and destroyed if we're following that law. So if the law of conservation of mass is correct, then that means that nothing can happen. Nothing will happen. It will stay as nothingness forever. And it will stay as it has been in the past and it will be in the future. Then we have the second law. That's Newton's first law of motion. And that states that objects, so if we have something, for example, we'll use a ball. If we have a ball, it cannot move by itself. It can't. But if something pushes it, then it can move. So another problem with scientists' belief is that nothing's happening, nothing's there, there's nothing in the beginning. So the problem is, well, how would the universe start? If nothing's there, nothing's moving, nothing's there to push, nothing can make something happen. 
Well, what does that mean? Nothing would happen, right? Nothing would happen, nothing would be made, nothing can move. Nothing would continue forever. It would just be nothingness. And that's our basic understanding of how the universe works. As of right now, those two laws prove um, what we know, that that's how things happen. And we know that those laws, everything follows those two laws. So what happens? With those two laws, does God have to follow them? No, he doesn't. Well, why? God, our creator, he is outside of time and space. So he's outside of the universe. So he can make something happen. And he can influence that nothingness and change it to become something. He can. Well, why? He doesn't have to follow our human understandings of how the universe works. He doesn't have to follow those rules. He's not limited to that. He's not limited to those laws or those requirements for how the universe works because he made the universe. So he's not required to follow those limitations of those laws. So our observational limits for how the universe works, God, he does not have limits. He's not limited to that set of rules. So God, he can do whatever he wants because he's our creator and he created the universe. God began the universe with four words. Let there be light. So the light started to spread all over the universe. Those four words changed everything. So these four words are the most powerful words that have ever been spoken. Well, why is that? These four words made life. They created the universe. They made everything happen. Before, there was nothing. And scientists, according to them, nothing would happen. If we we're following their laws and their rules, nothing can happen. Nothing's there to be able to make something happen. Nothing can happen. But with God, He impacted it and changed. He influenced the world and caused the universe to change and something to happen. Those four words started creation. Now, scientists will agree that something happened. They don't know what or who influenced that to happen, but they call it the Big Bang Theory. So the Big Bang Theory. That is their theory, but the problems are how would that happen if nothing is there before and nothing is there to influence something to happen? Like, how can the Big Bang Theory happen? It can't. It's impossible. Creationists, they're different. So they call the beginning, they don't call it the Big Bang Theory, but they call it creation. So we have the answers for who did that and who started everything, who started the universe in motion, who influenced everything to begin and grow and expand all over the universe. God, God did that. Because if we follow science, nothing would happen. Nothing can happen. Nothing's there. Nothing can cause anything to happen. But if we look in the Bible, we have our answer to what happened and to who happened. Who caused that? God. God happened. God changed everything. Scientists, they are still searching for answers to try and match it with their beliefs that we have these two laws, the law of conservation of mass and Newton's first law of motion. To be able to try and match both of those rules and to begin the universe, it's impossible. You can't do it. There's something missing and they don't know. They don't know who or what caused that to happen. 
and what caused that change. But we know who. It was God. For something to be able to happen and change and start the universe, we need a creator. We need something or someone to do something to cause that to happen. And God did that. So our creator, he set everything into motion. The stars, the moon, the sun, the earth, everything. He set it into motion for us. Now, when we look at part of the passage of the scripture, we see that God, he called the light good. That is the first thing that God calls good. Light, that is the first thing that God calls good. And why is, why is that important? Well, to be able to understand that light is good and important, we need to look into the Bible and see how many different times that they use the word light and see the different meanings and the different contexts that surround the word that is used. So in the Bible, the word light, it is used 235 times. Light always represents holiness, goodness, knowledge, wisdom, grace, and hope, and God's reverence. So my favorite verse in the Bible that is related to light and darkness is from the book of John. It's in chapter one and it's verse five. That's my favorite. So we are going to look at a little bit in the book of John. We'll be in chapter one, verses one through five. So I'm gonna put up a video from the Deaf Bible app. And once again, I do not own the rights for this video, but I'm using it for educational and informational purposes. Here's the disclaimer. For my hearing audience, I will read directly from it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. He's gonna finish signing and then I'll be right back. So verse five is my absolute favorite because it discusses that light, it spreads in the darkness and it reaches through the darkness. The darkness can't beat it. The darkness cannot conquer that light. It just can't. The light spreads throughout and it is bright. Now, can the darkness beat the light? It, it can't, it's impossible. That is because the light is stronger than the darkness. So it reminds me of when I was a little kid and I was scared of the dark. I was scared to sleep because I was so scared of the dark. There's gonna be monsters in the dark, in the corners. There's gonna be monsters over there. So my parents, what did they do? Well, my parents, they went to the store and they bought me a nightlight. So that nightlight, what it did was it lit up the entire room. It lit up all of the darkness. So my room, it was no longer dark. Now it had a light seeping into all of the corners. So now I could see where the dark corners previously were. Now it was light and I could see everywhere. And I knew I was safe and it gave me comfort. So I know that the light would protect me from whatever scary monsters were hiding in the dark. So that light, it spread all over the room and the darkness was no more. That small night light was more powerful than all of that darkness in my room. It spread 
that little itty bitty light, that little pink lava lamp, it spread all over throughout my room, my whole room. And now, because of that light, I could see clearly and I felt safe. It doesn't matter how small the light is that starts, it will still be more powerful than the darkness. It's amazing. Now, also in that part of scripture, it mentions that there is the word of God. And in the beginning, it was with God. The word of God was with him. Well, who is the word of God? Who is that? So we are going to be looking at a different part of the Bible to be able to understand who the Word of God is. So we are going to be in the book of John, chapter 8, verse 12. And in that part of the Bible, that talks about how Jesus, who He is, and how He Himself is the light of the world. So I'm going to put up a short video from the Deaf Bible app. Here's that disclaimer again, and I will read directly from the text. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus, he is our light. That means that we never have to walk alone in darkness again. Because Jesus, he will come right next to us and walk with us forever. And he's going to protect us from the evil that might be hiding in the darkness. Jesus, his light is so bright and more powerful that it will protect us from that darkness, that evil that might be hiding, ready to hurt us. Jesus, he will protect us. So in contrast to the light, which is good and holy, then we have the darkness, which is typically associated with evil, sin, and sadness. So when God created the light and it spread throughout, he separated it from the darkness. Did God call the darkness good? No, he didn't. He did not call the darkness good. Now, out of all of the parts of scripture, light is representing good, and then darkness is representing evil. But both are still important. The light is more powerful than the darkness, but both are still really significant. And that separation created day and night. It made both morning and evening, and that was the first day. Next week, we're going to be looking at the second day of creation. If you want to continue learning more about how the earth was made, you can go ahead and subscribe. And if you have questions or comments, you can let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, you can leave a like. I hope to see you next week. Remember, love like God loves you. Bye, love you.